have a question. What is your favorite song and how do you connect with it? Is it when you fell in love or through something really difficult? I'm your host, Tiffany Mason. Now join me as I interview others and we take a walk down memory lane with them. Let's get lost in why that music matters to them. Turn up your radio and let's explore memories with a beat. Hello, Podcast Land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Memories with a Beat. Today, I have with me Stephanie Costello Silvia. And uh, thank you so much for joining me, first of all, today. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. If you don't mind, tell my audience just a little bit about yourself, where you are, what you do, that kind of thing. Sure. I am Stephanie, my mama of three, a wife and an avid mountain climber, I like to call myself. I love climbing mountains. Uh, Any elevation is my jam. And I'm an intimacy and relationship advisor. So I help people when they're struggling with their communication, setting boundaries and really enhancing their self-control. Okay, very cool. And you have a podcast that you, do you touch on those subjects? Do you interview people? What is the exact content? I know, I know the topic, Mm. but what is the content of your podcast? Yeah. So I love to help people share their stories. I'm really passionate about uh, the truths behind the story, right? Sometimes we can get caught up in the details. And when we share some of the details and we, and we see into ourselves in ways that we may never have seen into ourselves before, which is where the like the intimacy truths come from my podcast is called the intimacy truths podcast because my goal is to help people see the truth about intimacy and that it's not just what happens behind closed doors that it's within us and who we are as people so when people get to share their stories and share their challenges that they've overcome it brings things out in them that they didn't know that they had uh, and it's pretty incredible to watch that happen in a quick 20 to 30 minute conversation usually at the end of the conversation when we're done recording, they're like, I can't believe, you know, I learned something new today, or, you know, I feel so confident, I feel so uplifted, there is just such an incredible feeling to provide that. So I really try to use story to show people rather than tell people. Interesting. Okay. So it is interview style. Mm. And there, do they originally start out with like, this is the issue? Or do you guys just start talking and then you identify the issue? How does that Mm. exactly develop? Usually I ask them a few questions before we start recording. Like what was their biggest challenge? How did they overcome it? What does that correlate to their business? Because mostly I interview entrepreneurs. And usually when we're doing something as a profession, it's because there's a skill we learned in our, in our, along the way from a challenge most often. Mm. And uh, that skill is now something we want to help somebody else learn or do or or provide to the world. So uh, I asked them what's been their journey. What was their journey like before we start recording? And that usually gives them the opportunity to figure out what do they want their title of the podcast to be? What do they want to share uh, with the world about their intimate self? And so normally we'll have some sort of theme that we are generically talking about throughout uh, the podcast. And it's really interesting when we start in one place and then we come complete full circle Yes, by the end of the podcast. I really love when that happens. Yes, that is fun. Um, Well, that sounds really good to me. And FYI, guys, I mean, yours truly is going to be on it. So probably (laughs) want to start listening now. So when my episode comes up, you know, you're just like, oh, good. It's Tiffany's episode now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called Intimacy Truth, correct? The Intimacy Truths with an S podcast. Yeah. So if you guys want to check that out, of course, it will be in the show notes. And mm-hmm. let's learn a little bit more about Stephanie now. What song did you pick for my audience? And then feel free to also go into, you know, kind of how you relate to it or how it makes you feel or whatever, yeah. whatever you want to share with us. For sure. So I picked the song Super Bloom by Mr. Wives. And I remember somebody sent me an article and this song, this video was in it. And when I listened to it, it just brought this, it it, it was such a uh, transformational experience when I had never heard the song before. I had never heard about who Mr. Wives were. Um, and the biggest piece, I'm actually looking at the lyrics to uh, read some of the main pieces. Resilient little thing, just like mama raised you. So you got that wildfire in your soul. Don't ever let it go. Make it burn so bright that they all know. And one of my 
journeys as a kid when I first started uh, my healing journey was if I don't do it for me, then nobody else will. And so when the song came up, it just reminded me of to stay on that journey and to continue doing what I need to do to take care of myself so that I could live the life in alignment that I want to live it versus what other people are telling me I need to. How old were you when you had that come to you? Because you're telling me when you were a child. So what does that mean in age? 13. And it's interesting you asked that because then there's other lyrics that uh, come up and it says, never rained in the desert till I picked me for the very first time. It's darkest before the sunrise. That's when I... And then it goes Super back into bloom. yeah. Super <laughs> bloom. Yeah. So if you guys have not heard this song before, it technically changes your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have been sharing this with my friends because obviously, you know, people tell me what their song is before the interview. And yeah. so I was like, oh my gosh. So <laughs> this is like dancing in your kitchen. This is yeah. like after a big win in your business. Mm. This is like after a great mom or dad win. This mm. is like after the best date night with your spouse. This is such a, it, it made me think of, okay, guys, bear with my singing, but it made me think of girl, put your records on. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. It made me think of that song. It has the same kind of vibe to it. So if you guys know that mm. song and you love it, this is a very similar vibe. Never heard of the band myself either. Do you know anything about the band, Stephanie? No, not much. I do listen to some of their other songs. I have like a YouTube playlist. There's mm-hmm. another one. Um, be ha- uh, Something about being happy and, and smiling. And throughout the whole video, she's like having a hard time. and She's hiding under her couch. And then uh, at the end, it like she's all dressed up and she goes to walk outside and it starts to rain. Oh! So she like walked back in, got her umbrella. was like, it's okay. And just kept going. So don't bother me. They're very uplifty. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to check out a couple of their other songs yeah. because I'd like to add to that list though, part of me for cutting you no, off you're fine, you're fine. of the moments that this video, this music, this song really is helpful. There's this sense of knowing when you're on this journey and you're, you, f- you can feel the struggle, you can feel the challenge, you can feel that you're almost there, you're getting there, but you're just getting to the top of the mountain, as I would say, like you've (laughs) broken through the tree line and there's still like this rocky climb that looks really tough and you want to cry, but you haven't cried because you know you're going to make it. The sense of knowing this song is really good for those moments too. Like I know I've picked myself. I know it's the right time. It's, it may be raining right now, but I'm going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Can you share one of those times with us where you've just kind of felt like, gosh, I am so close and you want to give up, but you have so much faith in yourself. Yeah. You're like, nah, I'm going to push through. I am not what you would call a graphics designer at all, but with Canva on my desktop and I've even gotten brave enough to create on my phone, I am. I have impressed myself with the eye catching content I have created and I really love my podcast artwork. I love that my son and I sat on the laptop for about an hour playing with fonts, effects, and the backgrounds to collaborate the mother-son artwork of Memories with a Beat. Click on the link in the show notes to get started creating your custom content today. On that note, on with the show. So my when I started my journey, I was 13, uh, that I almost died from alcohol poisoning. And oh before that, there was this sort of sense of knowing, but you're young and you don't, you know, but you don't know, right? You know, there's mm-hmm. things that are wrong, but you don't know what they are. You and, can't really like put your finger on it. You right. know, something's off, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I was just, life was being taught to me a certain way and I was on that path and I didn't know any different until I almost got sick or I did get sick. I should say I almost died. And had they put me in a room and left me to my own fences, I would have choked on my own uh, vomit and that would have been terrible. So I just remember saying hospital and a person in the room said, no, I don't want to get in trouble. And that was a life awakening moment for me. You know, even absolutely intoxicated, I still had this sense of like, this is not the path. I just remember laying on the couch and the next day... I was sick for a good two weeks. It took me a good two weeks to come back from that. 
And I did it all by myself. And I just remember walking somewhere. I was talking. I don't even remember the conversation. I don't remember who I was talking to. I was just on my phone and I was walking and I could see, I can see the pavement below me, um, even in just telling the story. And I remember thinking to myself, if I don't do this for me, nobody else will. And that from that moment on, I just never looked back. That determination and resiliency, even in those moments where I'm like, I want to rip my hair out and <laughs> scream like, why is this happening? Right. Yes. Um, I still have no doubt whatsoever that I will get through it and that what's to come will come. Um, that, that perseverance is something that never will ever be taken away from me. I think once you survive such a, a challenging moments that I had to survive at 13 with no help, no, therapy, you know, I did all by myself. None none of the adults in my life were able to support me. So uh, I just, making it through that, I can survive anything. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry you went through that. Um, What does that look like when you say that you did it two weeks by yourself? Does that mean you didn't go to school for those two weeks? Does it mean that you Mm -hmm. were with going through like alcohol withdrawal? Did you, was there some kind of self-medication that you were doing? What did you do for two weeks to heal your body? It was kind of like feeling like I had the flu. Um, I'll be honest, I don't 100% remember. I know it was two weeks. I know I went camping. I had to get up really early the next morning to go camping with a friend and screaming children in the car for four hours was (laughs) the worst thing ever. I was very sick. I just, I was very low energy, couldn't move, um, very dehydrated, couldn't really eat. Uh, There was no not going to school. That was a big learning thing I was taught was you can, you can play, but you also have to go to work. So, um, yeah, so I still went to school. Uh, I probably slept in some of my classes. I, I remember being very sick and you know teachers they don't again teachers know but they don't really know so they know when something's off with their students and I I think I just kind of sat in the back of the class most of the time with my head down like this Mm -hmm. and my pen in my hand as if I'm writing yeah (laughs) probably sleeping so wow when you went on the camping trip you said it was with a friend and then Mm -hmm. they must have had siblings yes yes they did and I'm curious when you guys went on this trip Was it like your friend's parents were so much more attentive, loving? No. No. They weren't. They were also, they were, I think they were aware, just not really fully aware. But I also was very good. I knew what I needed to hide in order Mm. to uh, continue on the journey that I was on and just having to live, survive at that time in being in that environment, I had to survive. So mm-hmm. it, you, when you're, when you live in that environment, when you grow up in that kind of situation, you just, you learn what, what you need to do to get by. And I was very mm-hmm. skilled at that. Wow. I have to imagine that was like the world's worst hangover. It, I wouldn't even, it's like it, the flu times like 10. It, it really is a very terrible experience. Um, to have to, for your body to try to heal from that, especially at such a young age, your, Mm -hmm. uh, my body was probably more alcohol than, than other liquids, you know, that we have in our bodies, uh, Mm. that day. So. Yeah. Now, um, do you feel like your friend's parents were better parents to her? Like, did you have parent envy? I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Like, no, 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 no parent envy. Um, I, I never, I don't, I'm not a very envious person. If I see something that somebody has, I, I go for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if I've ever wanted something, I've never not, if I put my mind to something, I'm ha- it's mine. Like that, right. that's just right. the end of the conversation <laughs> kind of thing. Like Right. But at 13, like you can't control who your parents are, right? Yeah, you can. So that just surprises me. I guess I yeah. can be an envious person. I'm pretty confident in myself, but, yeah. um, I could see at 13 just being like, gosh, I wish someone would just give a damn, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm almost dying and nobody cares. I and think that happened later when I turned like 16, when I started, mm-hmm. uh, you know, going, when I started really getting into, I've always played sports. Um, but my, okay. I just always, my parents are just never there. 
they were always working. Mm. I was lucky enough to even to make it to games. Um, other parents would bring me. I always had what I call earth angels, people who mm. kind of took me under their wing for the time that they had me. And then there was somebody else. And then there was somebody else. So um, I there was times where I did go without, but th- when I didn't have the opportunity to control it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, when I started to get older and going to school and going to college and having to fill out all the forms by myself and do all the adult things and not having, and seeing all these other kids with their parents at orientation on the first day of college. And I'm just like walking around, figuring out myself and not knowing what to do. And, you know, I, I've, I just kind of, those are the moments that when parents are supposed to be there, I guess another moment where I felt Mm -hmm. not envious, but sad that other kids had what they had and I didn't, um, is when parents would pat me on the back because I did such a good job in the game. And, um, I would, I had no idea who they were. I had no (laughs) idea whose parents they were. And then, and I'm like walking off the field knowing I kicked some serious butt on the field and these parents recognize it. So it felt good that somebody at least recognized it. Um, but those are some moments where it's like, gee, I wish uh, my parents were here. It's kind of weird to be a good player on the team and not have parents there to cheer mm-hmm, you on with mm-hmm. the other parents. I can appreciate that because my kids actually don't play sports. And so I did. And mm. my mom was always there. And so I just naturally thought I would always be there uh, in the stands cheering for my kids as loud as I could, patting them on the back, you know, taking them out for ice cream or something afterwards. And that is just not how my life played out. So I have the opposite yeah. where sometimes I'm like, you know, people will post pictures of them with their kids or, you know, sporting events and stuff. And I'm like, man, I just, I don't know what that feels like, I guess. So it's not the end of the world, but yeah. um, just kind of funny that it's the opposite end where I'm so eager, but I have nobody to cheer yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> My daughter's doing cheer now, so we'll see where that goes. But yeah, for the mm. most part, they, they were never really big sports fans. What sports did you play, Stephanie? Soccer, basketball, softball, anything in nature, you, you, you name it. I was out there doing it. I love nature. That's my absolute sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that uh, sports were maybe an escape for you? Um, I think it provided structure. Okay. So that's one thing that nobody could take away from me was how good I was at sports and my grades or what my papers looked like, how colorful they were. So I'm a highlighters person and colorful (laughs) pens. And uh, those are things that those are ways that I learned to uh, love my life and and expand on the things that I can control. Um, Obviously, in in that time, it was very tough. Like if I wasn't at sports, I was crying myself to sleep every Mm. night. If um, I wasn't playing a game or at practice and working on schoolwork. I was really struggling with the addiction recovery, completely solo, no help, and and my parents completely oblivious to what was going on with me. Yeah. Uh, not to make light of it, but a little bit. Uh, is this the alcohol that you drank that like you're like, ah, never again? Um, so I don't drink actually, if I do drink, I'll drink maybe once a year, Yeah. but it's not because, um, I can't have that. And, and, you know, it's not this like curse that I stay away from or anything. It's just, um, I don't like the feeling of it. I, I don't like how my body feels after, and I already struggle enough with some medical conditions Mm. that adding something I already, so sadly, uh, in February I got sick with a it's called a dysautonomia. It's where your autonomic nervous system is dysfunctions and it doesn't work properly. So it, it shoots adrenaline off in the wrong times and creates your low blood pressure and all this other stuff. And so when I, my mm. blood sugar spikes, it, it spikes the adrenaline and it causes all these different interactions in your body. And so I already feel either super into- like intoxicated yeah. because <laughs> I get very dizzy from my blood pressure being all over the place. Or f- super hungover because mm. once it spikes, I get dizzy and all over the place. But once it drops, I get super fatigued and, and brain fog and all this other stuff. So I've been oh, cursed no. with already feeling 
all of the pains without any of the fun. <laughs> yeah. So bummer dude. Well, yeah. I always say like, I mean, I love to have drinks with my friends, yeah. but I think it's funny because lots of times my friends are like, Oh my gosh, are you drunk? I'm like, heck no. Yeah. I, I don't need to have alcohol to have fun. Yeah. I like to have alcohol, but I don't need it. And I yeah. think that you, you're probably, difference. yeah, you're probably a fan of that too, where you just, yeah. you don't need it. I mean, you right. can absolutely have. Yeah. If I fun, want so. it, then cool but I don't ever really want it I'd rather yeah. spend 20 miles in the woods than drink three <laughs> drinks and not be able to go hiking so yeah <laughs> <laughs> now do you have your parents in your life still have have yeah. things changed at all um things have definitely changed I am a lot more assertive a lot more vocal mm-hmm. a lot more boundaries um mm-hmm. I have a pretty clear, concise structure that I expect to have when people are around my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I get a lot of pushback for it because I am not, that is a one area of my life that I will not um, compromise or around. It's my family, my children. I am not going to let dysfunctional patterns be passed down from generation. I'm already doing my own damage with, you know, still (laughs) trying to break the generational patterns as I'm raising children. That's a very uh, tough, challenging thing to navigate. So um, when it comes to boundaries, I'm very firm and vocal about them. I have no problem with saying something. And if it makes somebody uncomfortable, I love and respect it. And I, you know, thank you for sharing, but it's something that you're going to have to learn to deal with if this is a relationship you want to continue to maintain. So. Yeah. Super important to have those boundaries. Mm. And uh, I'm super proud of you. I mean, it's really hard. I know my dad actually smokes. And so it's been a very hard thing, you know, like, please don't smoke around the babies. Please don't smoke around the kids. Please don't smoke in the house. Yeah. You know, and it's been very uncomfortable, but I think it's like, you're saying like, if this relationship is important to you, then it's something that you will respect respect yeah for sure and even for me there's no please don't it's do not or you're leaving Mm -hmm. um it's very clear and very specific with what's said and it's interesting when I if I do catch um my dad also smokes and so if I do catch cigarettes Mm -hmm. being around I smoked around you my entire life yeah and I have incredibly challenging asthma thank you very much (laughs) And then, like, he just isn't aware and doesn't know. So I have to be a little bit more sensitive sometimes. But there's times where I'm just – I may come across as being insensitive, but it's still something that – my children's health is not worth being compromised because I need to be sensitive about somebody else's feelings. So Yep, I agree 100%. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When did you first hear this song? Oh, I want to say about a year ago. Oh, so it's pretty new for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like I don't, I mean, I don't really know you super well. I know you kind of, but I feel like you're a dance in the kitchen mama. Like the kids are out there, (laughs) you're making something. It doesn't have to be anything complex, but you're making whatever the meal is and you're just kind of being cute with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can either agree or distort my, my (laughs) story that I've told myself about yourself with this song. Um, but when, when are you finding yourself listening to it? Or I know, um, emotionally when, but are you in the car? Are you in your office? Are you, you know, being mm. cute with kids? What, what, when do you normally have it on? Um, this song, sometimes if I need that jolt mm-hmm. of, of inspiration, then I'm like, okay, this is my jam. This mm-hmm. is my song. Um, there's times where my daughter has a very, mm, outlandish, perspective sometimes and she just will go so far into the future with her thoughts it's like where are you going come back like come back to here or she'll go so far in the past and it's like let's not go back there either let's let's stay here and so when there's those moments where thoughts are just running and energy is just Mm. rampant this song is a very grounding song this song and then I have like another several few songs on the list like be happy yeah um what else? Just be happy. That one. Just dance. There's a few Megan Trainer ones that are oh, kid appropriate with like that yes. uh, the peanut in the video. Usually it's some some of the songs that are I think there's one by Kelly Clarkson, but it's it's kind of 
Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it because it has a negative undertone. It's mm. like I'm a, I'm broken and I accept that I'm broken, which okay. is resonates with me. But I don't want to feed that message to her. Sure. <laughs> it's like um, so. There's there's a list of songs that I've tried to find. I we don't listen to the radio, um, so we try to get that inspiration and and those good messages, those inspirational messages versus some of the underlying messages that some of these songs in our nowadays world can really imprint in not great ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's very admirable and, you know, trying to control that message that they're hearing subliminally. I know we were, I had interviewed another lady and she said that she loved this song. And I said, why? And she said, I just remember my mom singing it so passionately, you know, Mm -hmm. so they're watching Mm -hmm. us and, um, you know, they're trying to figure it out too. So I think that's great. You're being a good role model and also setting boundaries and letting them know that it's okay to have the boundaries. It's okay Mm -hmm. to have them, own them and follow through with them. There's nothing wrong Mm -hmm. with that. I think that that's Mm -hmm. a great message that you're sending to your kids. Um, And definitely, you know, we're not all getting it right in the parenting game. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's okay to fall a couple of times, um, but it sounds like you're really trying hard to (laughs) send some really great messages to your children. So absolutely. It's all that we can do. Well, is there anything else you want to add about this song? I mean, we could go back to the lyrics a little bit because I love that she starts out uh, so sassy, resilient little (laughs) thing, just like your mama made you, you know, and even though your mom didn't teach you to be resilient, she made you resilient with the circumstances that you were a part of. Mm -hmm. And then I also liked, uh, let's see here. Oh, I love when it said breaking through the cracks, you break through. And I thought that's right, because when those Mm. barriers come in front of us, when things get hard, (laughs) when we've got a little bit of cement on top of us just push right through. And I just love the visual of, you know, like trees breaking through sidewalks Mm. and weeds coming through the, the, the sidewalk cracks, which granted, I know the cracks are like pre-made, but they still push their way through that cement. Not always. Yeah. You can pave over anything and nature will always win. Yeah. 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 Uh, And then let's see here. For me, the other ones yeah. are, I deserve congratulations. I'd never thought that I'd survive. If you tell me I won't make it, that's when, uh, that's when I super, super bloom blue. like that. Like super that's where the resiliency and the determination comes from that I was referring to earlier. I, and I deserve congratulations and that's absolutely huge, you do. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, absolutely you do. That's a huge, uh, to be able to accept that is a huge transformation. A lot of people who experience trauma as kids, uh, I'm kind of going into my, 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 my advising, mentoring, therapeutic mentoring kind of hat here. But (laughs) um, when we, when we experience trauma, we take, usually we take on two different roles. There's the persecutor role where they become the aggressor or there's the giver role where we become the rescuer. And Mm -hmm. um, most people that I work with are the givers, the rescuers, the people pleasers. And we learn at a young age that our, we're not valuable, that our emotions don't matter, that our wants don't matter, our desires don't matter. And that messaging is, is how the aggressor learns to control us um, and how we allow them to control us. And mm. so I please take that with a grain of salt. I am not saying that we are allowing our trauma to happen to us because if we had the power to control <laughs> it, we wouldn't allow it, right? Um, right? But at some point, we do have to take that control back. And when we become adults, mm-hmm. we can create that safe place that was not created for us. We can create those attachments and that love for ourselves that was not created for us. So that I, the, to give myself that celebration, like I deserve to celebrate and I'm going to shine my light as bright as I want to shine it. I don't care who doesn't like it or likes it, like come and join me. And if you don't like it, then I'm sorry, but my light is still shining as I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> you know, like I deserve it. That's and right. that breaking out of that old messaging and into that new messaging is mm-hmm. it feels great and then you're shining your bright and you're like whoa wait a minute I shouldn't do that too much attention ah run away right and then it's like no wait a minute I deserve it and it's like this back and forth until you finally get to a place where you're like yeah no it's shining and I love it <laughs> so yeah yeah well I think it goes back to um you know I've heard we teach mm-hmm. people how to treat us so while you're saying you don't allow the trauma nobody says mm-hmm. that you're allowing it But I think that what you're focusing on is, you know, if you find yourself in one of those modes, teach people how you want to be treated. So if you want to be treated where they don't smoke and drink around your children, 
You're teaching them how you want to be treated. If you bow down and, and always are a doormat, you're teaching people how to treat you. So to some right. extent, we are responsible or capable or, you know what I'm trying to say. We have to, to take some ownership in our decision making mm-hmm. process mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and there's going to be times where we're going to fall back in our old ways. Of course. And that's where you deserve some grace. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up for it, right? Don't bring yourself down because you fell back a little bit. I even recently fell back a little bit and I was angry with myself. Like, why did I do that? But I was angry with myself because, not because I was putting myself down. Angry in the sense of um, I allowed myself to be treated a certain way again. And it's like, no, I am, I am, I'm bigger than this. I'm better than this. And I deserve to have the things that I'm craving for. I'm not asking for anything completely unrealistic. Yeah. I am being very easygoing and simplistic in the relationship most often, except for this one time I decided to be very specific and dig my heels in. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Right. Exactly. Mama bear. She comes yes. out. Yeah. And, and mama bear can come out for yourself too, people. Yeah. A hundred percent. You, and that's the piece is if you don't have that motherly figure that can be there for you as much as you desire or want, then you have to do it for yourself. And um, this song reminds me of that, to do it for myself. Yeah. 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 I love when she says, I deserve congratulations. I can see like this person walking down a sidewalk. They got like cut off jeans, white tank top. Maybe it's a black lady with that fun, like moppy hair. I just love that look (laughs) so much bright red lipstick and she's like spinning around she's like i deserve congratulations oh i just love it i love it so much (laughs) (laughs) well if you guys do not know this song i strongly encourage you to go check it out it's called super bloom by mr wives check out stephanie's uh podcast it's going to be in the show notes the intimacy podcast Mm -hmm. and i hope you all have a great day i hope this episode was music to your ears Hey, podcast land. I have a quick question for you. Do you listen to this episode and think, man, I have a song like that? If so, I would love to have you apply to be a guest on my show. Just go to virtuallyuva.com, select our podcast, and on there, there's a spot for you to fill out a form, submit your application, and I'd love to get back in touch with you and just kind of talk about the songs that you resonate with that bring you back to somewhere and possibly get you to be a guest on my show. So won't you please consider taking a walk down memory lane with me and my audience? Well, that was fun, wasn't it? You never know what rabbit holes we'll get to go down and explore. Were you reminded of anything or anyone? Share what it was with me in a review. Honestly, the reviews don't do me any favors other than knowing people like you are listening to this podcast. Insert cheesy wink. (laughs) However, the ratings do help. So leave me five stars. You know you wanna. This podcast was produced by Virtual You, supporting you in all things podcasting. To connect or check me out on social media, I mean, I know you're just gonna stalk me. But see the show notes, as always, for details. Can't wait to dive into my next guest's memories with a beat. Hit subscribe now. You don't want to miss the next episode.